You're listening to Cosmic Cousins Soul Centered Astrology. For grounding your ass from all the new age sass, I am your host, Jeff Henshaw. Season 6 of Cosmic Cousins is a bi monthly astrology offering. It's released every new and full moon. And it's dedicated to honoring the interconnectedness of our universal family through embodied health, self-discovery, and deeper learning. Hey, Cosmic Cousins, welcome back to another week of the show, Sagittarius season. We're straddling the light and dark here in Sagittarius season. This is the time of year where we're, we are building up momentum is the best way that I can describe it in words, but it's hard to describe things in words right now. We have no planets and air signs. It's all earth and water with this fire of Sagittarius season. So we're building up momentum and it's towards the winter solstice here on the Northern Hemisphere. It's towards the Southern the summer solstice on the southern hemisphere. And so this premise of light and dark is really, really important when working with Sagittarius and understanding Sag. We also have this light and dark with the polar sign too, which is Gemini, the twins. So we'll talk more about that polarity of Sagittarius and Gemini on the Gemini full moon episode in two weeks. But today, this is our Sagittarius New Moon episode. So season six, the show, we've been tuning in to the rhythm of the moon, connecting every new and full moon. We've also been connecting with the esoteric practice of using tarot and building a bridge between tarot and astrology, which is cool because Sagittarius is about building bridges between different philosophies. And so we definitely partake with a lot of Sagittarian themes here on the show. And so if you'd like, you could go ahead and get your tarot cards out if you work with the tarot. If not, I'll just explain them to you and talk to you a little bit about their imagery. We'll do that in a little bit. But for now, um, the cards that I use when working with Sagittarius, we've got the soul growth card. That's what I like to call it, the soul growth card, which is temperance, number 14. We've got Wheel of Fortune, which is Jupiter, Wheel of Fortune is connected to the planet Jupiter, which is the ruling planet for Sagittarius. And then the court cards, mutable signs get to have a little bit more fun. They get two court cards. There's 16 court cards, but 12 astrological signs. So the mutable energy, since it's changeable, is adaptable. I assign the page and the queens to them. So we've got the page of wands and the queen of wands out here on our Sagittarius altar. And I've also got a lot of candles lit. Sagittarius and fire, but the ability to spread the fire out, to expand it, feels really important when working with Sagittarius, right? So Sagittarius is this mutable fire. It's taking us to the shortest day of the year here on the, in the Northern Hemisphere. And so you can think it's interesting, fire, the light, the expansion, the warmth, but it's taking us to the darkest day. So there's a bit of this darker feel. So seeing fireworks at night or being at a bonfire at night or holding a flame in the dark, this all feels very Sagittarian. It's the quest towards deeper knowing. And a lot of times this is coming in the form of this inner solitude, this inner warmth, this inner light. Again, this balance between light and dark here with Sagittarius, aloneness, turning the gaze towards the deeper felt expression of your soul. This is what we're doing this time of year. No big deal. And I wouldn't expect anything less than a sign that is evolving off of Scorpio. But there is contradiction here, of course, And we feel a lot of contradiction with our mutable signs in general. So, but to be mutable fire, it's to also have an outward expression. It's about this creative adaptability. It's about a passionate spontaneity. It's about expanding our perceptions. It's outward travel and inner travel. And so each cycle, each tier of consciousness 
starts with a fire sign. We have Aries, which is the match, the 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 spark of existence, the beginning of time. Aries starts our first tier of consciousness, which is personal. And then Leo starts our second tier of conscious consciousness, which is a bit more subconscious. Uh, Leo is more about tuning into the primal energy that dwells within. Whereas Sagittarius is then we could so- call it super consciousness, the cosmic tier. We're expanding now. Our final four signs of the wheel are much more transpersonal, we could even say. So Sagittarius, we could call transpersonal fire. Our perceptions take on a much more wide and contemplative lens when we're moving through Sag, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces, right? Which on the Northern Hemisphere is the winter months. And so all of the layers that were shed from the deep soul burging, intense transformation of Scorpio season which we've just moved through in the past 30 days prior, we're all in preparation for making room for this expansion of Sagittarius season. But it's really interesting because this year, and you might feel it, it feels quite different. And that's the thing is these astrological energies are going to feel different for us every year. But some of the reasons why it might feel different for us is because we're coming off of a Mercury retrograde right? So Mercury stationed direct just last week, and it's still in its shadow until the first week of December. So we're still in this Mercury in Scorpio. Mars is also in Scorpio until the end of the year. So it's inviting us to take action, Mars, towards processing our grief. Mars in Scorpio is to is inviting us to direct our ambition, Mars, towards our psychological processes, Scorpio. So we've still got some of the Scorpio stuff going on, but we're also expanding our vision for the future, Sagittarius. That's how we're shining our light. We're also having this huge invitation to let go of the old version of ourself. And this is all happening simultaneously as there's a shift. Jupiter's entering Capricorn, which we'll talk about in a moment. That's December 2nd. We're also building up towards a new decade, 2020. We're all stepping up to the podium of our higher self as we move into 2020, Um, a huge collective shift. And so even just the year 2020 outside of our patriarchal calendar, 2020 is about vision. It's a perfect eyesight when we have 2020 eye vision, right? So Sagittarius season is asking us what is our vision. And going into this year 2020, there is a a really huge invitation for us to get clear on what that vision is and how it represents that part of ourself that we see ourselves evolving into and towards. And so whenever it's Sagittarius season, if you're a Sagittarius sun, a Sagittarius moon, a Sagittarius rising, or really if you have any planet in Sagittarius, which for me, I have Uranus and Saturn and Sagittarius. And as an Aquarius, both Uranus and Saturn are my ruling planets. So Sagittarius is a big deal for me. I'm an Aquarius that's answering to Sagittarius. And so really anyone listening to this podcast is engaging with Sagittarius. Cosmic Cousins, for one, is a Sagittarius rising, expanding the horizons of our mind. And the opening tagline when I introduce the show, I say embodied health, self-discovery, and deeper learning. Right there, these three points are Sagittarian in, in essence. Embodied health. We're talking mutable fire processes their emotions through movement, connecting us to body, to mind, to spirit through movement, right? So many pop divas are Sagittarian. We've got Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Taylor Swift, Miley Cyrus, The list goes on, really, but also there's this feeling of movement with fire. Also, our queen of Sagittarius, of course, is Tina Turner. Movement, embodied health. And then self-discovery. So embodied health, self-discovery. Sagittarius is on a quest, an endless quest of self-discovery and deeper learning as well. Some other famous Sagittarians that are coming to mind right now are like Shirley Chisholm, Jane Fonda, Joan Didion. Marina Abramovich, Janelle Monet, Walt Disney, Mark Twain, Swami, Swami Sajidananda is an incredible example of, of Sagittarius. 
the symbol for the the yoga community that he founded in which is called integral yoga has i think it's probably 12 12 different symbols of religions world religions and they're all coming together at the central point this is sagittarius many paths and they all lead to one uniting truth which is reminding me of the wheel of fortune card the wheel with that center point the axle to the spinning wheel of life so focus is really important for us this time of year focus is really important for Sagittarius's in general finding that fixed gaze the drishti what is it that you're focusing on whatever you focus on tends to grow and Sagittarius is also about growth and expansion. Be very clear at this time of year. If you are finding yourself getting caught up in old fears, particularly in relationship to your long-term vision, particularly in relationship to your career, are you overworking yourself? Are you playing out outdated patterns in relationship to our patriarchal constructs? Are you living out father's truth dad's truth are you being over responsible are you thinking that you have to work hard all of this the reason i'm bringing this up is because this is the south node in capricorn the nodes of fate this access are really important this sagittarius season because we're building up to them we're building up to capricorn season where we will have eclipse and it will be our final eclipse on this cancer north node capricorn south node access as we approach the eclipse season next month, the momentum is building. There's more momentum building. And a lot of us are falling into outdated patterns in relationship to Capricorn. And so Capricorn wants to be practical. It wants to be responsible while simultaneously Jupiter, Jupiter is entering Capricorn on December 2nd. So we're expanding in Capricorn, but we're also really letting it go. And so this is interesting for us. And I've had a lot of people write in asking me about the huge conjunction that's happening between Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn in January. It's a huge date. This only happens once every 36 years when these two planets will come together. And so those turning 36 in this next year also have this in their chart too. You have Saturn and Pluto and Libra conjunct. So if you're one of those babes, this is the heightened experience of it. Saturn is restriction and obstacles. In the higher form, it shows where we're adults, where we're responsible. It's our connection to our elders. Pluto, death and rebirth, transformation, power, psychological healing. So Jupiter is entering Capricorn come January. And it's interesting, this whole Sagittarius um, talk that I'm giving you is, is talking about the future. We're, we're expanding now. It's important for us to know what's coming so we can feel into it. And this Sagittarius new moon is really asking us to get clear on what that vision is. Because after the Sagittarius new moon, it's full steam ahead into the vision that you hold for yourself for the future. And so if you're not pointing your arrow in the direction that you long to be, that you long to see yourself evolve to, the evolution of who you are to become in this new decade, then you're pointing your arrow in the, in the direction that is not serving you. So it's, this is a time for us to really get clear, to, to really spend some extra time alone, uh, in darkness, to meditate, making meditation a regular practice here is really, really important for us, right? It is this uh, passion within that we're wanting to real realign ourselves with at this time. So to distill all of this, because I find myself like here in the Sagittarian energy, just kind of like, it feels like it's just spiraling with all of this, this information. And so really to just break it down, what is really important for us here on this new moon, on this beautiful Sagittarian new moon, is to come into this place of deeper knowing, right? So this isn't about taking action, but it's just about this simple realignment of our heart, realigning our heart with the vision that we hold for the future. And that's the future of ourself for ourselves. It's the future for our planet. So what does that bring up for you? What is, 
how can you just realign yourself with that vision? We think of the archer as pointing a bow and arrow towards the sky or towards a target, right? What are you aiming towards? Are you getting caught up in the day-to-day? Are you getting caught up in the practical? Sagittarian energy isn't about the practicality. It's about the the vision, the um, uplifting inspiration of the possibilities that await. So, and right now the heaters just came on in the house. And so if you hear a hissing, that's what that is. But it feels kind of appropriate. But what I want us to do for this meditation, I'm really excited about, we're going to listen to a song by our dear friend, our cosmic cousin, Yogi Amanbir, who is a Sagittarius, of course. Um, you might remember Amanbir from last year. It was on the Sagittarian panel, which is the only live episode of the podcast ever, which was the Sagittarius panel last year when we crowned Tina Turner, our queen of Sag. And so Yogi Amanbir is a huge inspiration to me and to many of us in our community for his commitment towards the spiritual teachings of Kundalini. And he's actually off somewhere. I can't even keep up. He's somewhere in the world right now, but he'll be back towards the end of December and we're going to reconnect then. But just know that this, all of this energy that's coming to you in the song is coming from the Sagittarius and it is the, the Gaitri mantra. I think I said that right. Um, which is from the Kundalini practice and this mantra, this chanting, it offers this radiant divine healing for yourself, but also for others around the world. And I'm going to break down the words to the mantra for you. And this is just the simple meditation that we're going to have is we're just going to realign ourselves with these um, words, these syllables, these phrases. And through that, allow it to take you into this deeper space where you are aligning with your truth, right? And so this is part of this Sagittarian energy is utilizing the power of spiritual practices and particularly spiritual and religious practices that are not from your immediate surroundings, but are from somewhere else in the world. And so this Kundalini yoga tradition is coming from a different part of the world. And so it is connecting us to the, to the greater earth family, Earth is the esoteric ruling planet for Sagittarius. So keep that in mind too. So Ramadasa, Sa Se So Hung. These are the uh, different words here in the mantra. Ra it means the sun. It's connecting us with that frequency that gives us energy. It's the yang energy. Ra is the light, right? The expanse. And we talked about the light and the expanse of Sagittarius and the sirens are going off in the background, reminding us of that. And then Ma, Ma means the moon. It aligns us with darkness, with receptivity, with yin. And we were talking about this balancing between light and dark that we feel this time of year It's a very internal time of year as we're going towards the winter solstice, but the other half of the world is going towards the summer solstice. And then it's Da is the energy of earth with the esoteric ruling planet for Sagittarius. It's grounding us. It's bringing it here. And then there's Sa, which is the opposite of Da. It is uh, not the earth. It's infinity. It's cosmic. It's um, as we chant Sa, the energy rises upwards and outwards, and it's drawing in the healing of that which is universal, the universe. And then Sa is chanted again, and that second Sa is then to pull the cosmos, the infinity, the uh, universal intelligence into you. And then say is a way of honoring God or that, that greater um, consciousness, that collective consciousness. And then it's so hung are the last two words. And so, so is like a bridge, which is interesting because Sagittarius is a bridge builder. So is a vibration of the merger. It's interesting. I go on walks along the river and I will look at the world through the lens of the astrological sign that we're in. And this allows me to receive um, new downloads about what's going on in the collective based off the astrological energy. But I, during Scorpio season, when I'd walk along the river, I would notice the water. 
I w- would really just like connect to the sounds of the water and to how the water was moving. But here to this evening, right before I sat down to record this, as I was walking along the water, I noticed the light and how it was hitting the bridge. And the bridge became a huge focus. And Sagittarius is about building bridges between um, duality, building bridges between the world religions, many paths that lead to one truth. And so the word so is the vibration of the build bridger, build, the bridge builder or the merger, right? And so the final word is then hung. And so hung is the infinite. It's the essence of creation. So um, it's that service of the cosmic intelligence within you to then bring it without you. And so Rama, right? Sun, moon, or light, dark, and then Dasa, earth, infinity, Sa, again, to bring it into you. Say, the honoring of uh, that universal consciousness. So, building a bridge with it. And then hung the infinite. And so, as you listen to this chant, just allow it to wash over you. Again, this is a realigning. The Sagittarius new moon is not about a practical vision. It's much more about tuning into your soul and its desire for freedom and expansion. So as you listen to this, allow, allow yourself to feel into the expansiveness of Sagittarius and its quest for truth and how you have this part within you that you are realigning with. New moon is a great time to plant a seed of intention. And may that seed be nourished through this meditation, inviting in more space for joy in your life, expanding the boundaries of your world to invite more discovery, more passion, Align yourself with a deeper faith, right? So we're letting the ambition and practicality melt away. It's much more about taking um, the time to be internal. And, And really, it's like a releasing process this Sagittarius season here on this new moon, releasing that which doesn't serve you, releasing old beliefs, leaving it behind here in this decade so that as we enter the 2020s, we're making space and room to grow in love, to grow in faith. And so for our meditation, we're going to listen to these words by Yogi Amanbir. But allow it to to move you in the way that it wants to move you. We're in this mutable fire energy. So if you want to dance, let yourself dance to the words. Feel it in your body. If you want to sit in meditation, remember Sagittarius rules over the thighs and the hips. Sit in a beautiful meditation posture and allow it to activate these parts of yourself, right? To create this muscle memory of this higher vision. And one more thing. I know I keep talking. Sagittarius, right? Um... This song is over 12 minutes long. This is an expansive song. And this is part of it. Just allow yourself to be with the mantra and know that part of its healing is coming through by carving out this space. And so feel into the Jupiterian, Sagittarian expanse by being here in this meditation for the next 12 minutes. And so at this time, let's go ahead. We'll bring our awareness to our bodies and our breath for a meditation for the Sagittarius new moon to activate and awaken deeper healing and clarity in your life for expansive, faithful vision. This song, this mantra is brought to us by our dear friend, Yogi Amanbir.
By aligning ourselves with these greater cosmic vibrations, we create space in our life for true natural expansion. Thank you, as always, Cosmic Cousins, for being here and tuning in. Before we connect with the Sagittarius Tarot cards, I do have some updates and announcements for you. If you've been listening to the show the last couple of episodes, I've been hinting at and dropping some clues about the six-month journey of self-discovery that I have been leading for the past five years, which is called the Brooklyn Fools. And I said that I would be releasing information about that journey on this week's podcast episode. However, I should really take my own advice as an astrologer and not not announce anything during Mercury retrograde. Because now that I've really taken the time to reinvestigate, to retrograde, I've been meditating on... Uh, a lot with the Sagittarius new moon about the vision that I have for myself. And I know that the space that I'm creating in my life for expansion means that I have to let a few other things go. And so in order for me to manifest the Zodiac Queen's book into the world, which I know y'all want a Queen of the Zodiac book as much as I do, I will unfortunately not be able to host the Brooklyn Fool's Tarot Journey in 2020. So again, there is no Brooklyn Fool's Tarot Journey this year, but it is, um, it's not going away forever. I just know I am passionate about serving the tarot community through ritual immersion, and I do plan to bring the journey back either in 2021 or who's really to say, because things are moving forward here in this new decade, but um, tarot will always be a part of my life. But in order for me to write this Zodiac Queen's book, I've got to be able to focus my energy more directly on that. And so that brings me to my next announcement update. We have been having this show now for six seasons. This is episode number 78. And so the announcement is that the next episode, the Gemini Full Moon episode, which By the way, the Gemini full moon is December 12th. So that episode will be the finale episode for season six. And so now that we've had six seasons, I also am needing to take a break from the show for some time too. So in order to allow this podcast to grow and expand in new ways, I need to take some space from it for some time so that I can feel how and where it wants to grow. And so I think it'll be about a six month break. This is pretty big news. I've been working really hard to bring all of this information to you all as a service free of charge for quite some time. And I really need to reprioritize and refocus my energy so that I can feel supported and build a solid foundation for myself, which all of this has given us that Jupiter entering Capricorn feels. Right, Jupiter enters Capricorn on December 2nd. So what new vision for your sustainability and resourcefulness are you expanding into in 2020? So the announcements, no Brooklyn Fools 2020, and the podcast will be on a spiritual sabbatical for six months. So this is definitely, definitely really scary for me because the Brooklyn Fools has been a way of me securing a decent amount of income as a professional tarot reader, astrologer, mystic. And the podcast has introduced me to many of you who have booked readings. So I'm feeling scared. I'm also feeling like this is a huge leap of faith that by giving myself space from these practices that I'll be able to focus much more of my energy and intention towards writing a killer Zodiac Queen's book. So that's my Sagittarian expansion of faith right now. And the messages that have been coming through have been really strong from spirit that it's time for me to hold the vision of this book with fierce focus. And so I'm also asking you to hold that high vision with me. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here over the last two and a half years listening to the podcast. In the meantime, we still have the rest of this episode and the Gemini full moon episode season six finale coming, coming to you in two weeks. 
So we still have some stuff to look forward to. But this also brings to attention that I have a mailing list. So if you want to stay in touch with me, if you want to stay in touch when uh, I have new offerings coming out, if you want to stay in touch with when the podcast season seven will premiere, if you want to stay in the loop about the Zodiac Queens, sign up for the mailing list. There's a link in the bio of this, or you can go to my website, astrologycousins.com and sign up for the mailing list. And I'm not disappearing. I'm just reprioritizing. So I will still be offering 90-minute astrology readings. I'll be offering 90-minute tarot healing sessions in person in New York City or online. And you can find out that information at astrologycousins.com. There's a link in the show notes. It's such an honor for me to hold space for people. I've been booking a lot more clients in the past few weeks because I've been reprioritizing towards building my practice. And so... Yeah, if you'd like to see the Queen of the Zodiac book manifest and you haven't booked a reading yet, that would support me in that writing process. So go ahead, book a reading with me this month or in the new year. There's 10 more coupons left. If you use the coupon code PLUTO, uh, you'll get 20% off a reading. I offered 22 of those, and so there's 10 more left. And so, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm really holding this high vision of building my clientele base here in 2020. And so if you've already booked a reading and you want to follow up with me, this is a cool time to do that too. And so I'm really passionate about being of service for you on your astrology journey. So again, astrologycousins.com. You can find out how to book a reading with me there. And you can also sign up for the newsletter. Also, if you're a Patreon supporter of the show, I'll be sending you all a message in the coming week. So keep an eye out for that. And that is all of the updates and announcements I have for you all this week. And so let's transition into this last part of the show. So I have our Sagittarius tarot cards out here. We've got the ruling planet, which is Jupiter the Wheel of Fortune. We've got the Page and Queen of Wands, which are mutable fire. And then we have Temperance, which is the soul growth card for Sagittarius. So let's talk about it. The Wheel of Fortune is this vision in the sky. It's got symbols and archetypes on it. It offers us a clue to the happiness, the success, the fortune that we seek as humans here on Earth. And Sagittarius is connected to fortune and luck. It makes me think of Britney Spears' song, Lucky. So, but the thing is, is the Wheel of Fortune, it's not about obtaining fortune. She's actually teaching us that true fortune isn't determined by how lucky we are. It isn't determined by how hard we work. This is a message that's coming through really strong for us this Sagittarius season with Capricorn South Node. It's not about how much we pray even. It's not about how spiritual we are. The Wheel of Fortune is teaching us that true fortune is obtained by how lovingly present we can be with this cosmic intelligence that's all around us. And this cosmic intelligence is life. So when we are in line, when we are in flow, when we have quieted enough to feel this presence within ourselves and without ourself, which we were doing in that meditation, this is when we prosper. This is when we're in a flowed state. So Sagittarius often being perceived as lucky is a part of that flow state. It's not that they're lucky. It's that there is an ability to greet the world with an open mind, which opens the person up to this, the opportunities for expansion and growth. And so it's really this willingness to aim high towards the sky and to flow with life. When I look at the Wheel of Fortune, there's something that we'll see. It's the four fixed astrology signs are in the corners. We've got the cow, the lion, the eagle for Scorpio, and the angel for Aquarius. And they're all angels, and they're all reading books. This is a quest of deeper knowledge here. And then the wheel in the middle has all these different symbols on it, which are different symbols that connect us to God. And so this Wheel of Fortune comes to represent that moment of continual spiritual quest or the quest of oneness and knowledge that all paths lead to many truths or all many paths lead to that one uniting truth. And so that one uniting truth becomes the axle of the wheel. And so if we're stuck in the past, 
five years in the past, we're on the outside of the wheel. If we're stuck in the future, five years in the future, 10 years in the future, whatever the future is, we're on the outside of the wheel. Presence, being in the present moment. So like, for instance, anything that Sagittarius rules over will connect us to this. Sagittarius rules over world travel. So when you travel to another part of the world, you're in a flow state. When you show up to Italy and you don't have a plan, you are opening yourself up to the synchronicity of travel. This is the beautiful part about travel. And there is a presence that emerges within this. And also there is a awareness of a new part of yourself. So it makes me think if we're talking about many paths that lead to one truth, if you think of a circle and like a meditation circle, there's like 20 pillows in the center of that circle. There is an altar. This altar in the center of this meditation circle comes to represent truth, the altar's truth here in the middle at the axle of the wheel. Each person, each pillow has a different view of that altar. So the person sitting right across from you might see that behind the statue on the altar is a rose, but you don't see that rose. It takes us to get up and move to a different spot to get a more holistic understanding of the altar of truth. And so this is what travel does for us. When we go somewhere else in the world, we get to experience a new part of ourselves. When I lived in Hawaii, I was Trash Canyon. When I lived in LA, I started the Zodiac Queens book or the series. And now that I'm in New York, I'm taking a step back from all of it and and reprioritizing. We feel different in different places and we get a more holistic understanding of who we are. And this is a huge part of the page of wands, which is mutable fire. Pages are mutable, wands are fire. And so this is reflecting to us. Well, for one, when we look at both the page and the queen, they're, they're gazing up into the sky as if they're gazing at the wheel of fortune, this vision in the sky that holds all of this cosmic wisdom. The page of wands reflects Sagittarius's love of adventure and spontaneity. It has the sole lesson of learning to not act on a naive impulse, but instead to channel that excitement with deeper meaning and purpose. The page of wands follows that spark of joy. So during Sagittarius season, if it doesn't bring you joy, Why are you following its path? So it is symbolized. There's this salamander printed on his tunic, which is a magical creature of fire and transformation. And we see some of these themes continued on with the the Queen of Wands. So the Queen of Wands takes this a bit further. She goes deep within to, to reconnect to her desires. We're doing that this time of year. She goes deep within to connect to her creative impulses It's through her connection to her internal world, which all of the queens are connecting us to the internal world. She is realigning herself with her deeper knowings. And that it's also symbolized by the the black cats that's there on the card too, that sits at her feet. And so I'm looking at Pamela Coleman Smith's illustrations of these cards. And so even though she is off looking very stoic, the queen of wands, holding a sunflower in hand, She's got this black cat that's gazing at us. And so from the seat of her intuition, she acts from a place of confidence, but in a very nurturing and feminine way that is also aligned with this deeper intuitive nature. And so she has this fiery fearlessness, but she's also soft in her ambition and her pursuits. She's tuning in and listening to the deeper frequencies. So, This is also part of the invitation for us this time of year. And so this is why tarot is such a beautiful practice because it helps us build bridges between tarot and astrology so that we can get a deeper connection to the cards and also a deeper connection to these astrological transits. The soul growth card is really, really important for Sagittarius. Temperance, right? And it's making me think of in Tompkins Square Park, that's right over here in the East Village, there's a statue and it says temperance on it. It's the fountain in Tompkins Square Park. And so this is the recirculation of life after the death that is 13 that comes before it, the death of Scorpio, the soul growth card for Scorpio's death. And so this represents many things, but for one, temperance is moderation, it's gentleness. Sagittarian in a lower form can be indulgent, can overdo it, can be too expansive, right? So here, this is representing the Sagittarian ability to to have a more gentle approach, to have a more spiritual approach. It represents the Sagittarian ability to transmute hardship 
into new, into new life with faith, with hope. So this alchemical process is often symbolized in the temperance energy. We see an angel, one foot on land, one foot on water, with huge wings and has two cups and is pouring water from one cup to the other cup. But the angle at which the angel holds the cups, it would be virtually impossible to allow the flow of water to to be in the way that it is. The cups are seemingly, if, if you were holding the cups, they would be about two or three feet apart from each other. And so it looks like this river flow, this stream that's going from one cup to the next. And so this is an alchemical process. And it's this, al- this alchemical process, it's not about Um, I always thought of temperance as being a card of moderation, but moderation, it's not through subtraction. It's not through controlled moderation here in temperance, but it's rather through this gentle distillation process of adding connection to a higher power through spiritual practice. So Sagittarius on this level becomes this great teacher that grants wisdom through the assimilation of experiences, through its connection to higher knowledge, to higher power. And so Sagittarius is, is really is leading us on this pursuit of, of self-discovery. And we see in the background there's this pathway that's leading towards the mountains. So this is all building us up to uh, the Sagittarian quest of, of deeper wisdom and knowing that it's not a race, knowing that this is a continual journey of self-discovery throughout our entire lives and all of our incarnations. And so the lesson here for Sagittarius when looking at all these cards is to learn to orient the self in the present moment to a big picture objective that is all uniting. And so it's one which allows for a conscious direction towards bringing some sort of understanding to the greater whole, to to other cultures, to being a bridge between philosophies. And so this is expanding the horizons of our mind, our world, through learning, through travel. And so the scattered Sagittarian energy maybe creating many purposes or ideals to rationalize or justify their quest or their spontaneity. And so for me, even what I was sharing is having the Brooklyn Fool's Tarot journey, doing the podcast, writing the Zodiac Queens. This is too many quests going on. Again, bringing it to the center of the wheel, having a fixed, focused gaze. There can be an enormous amount of impracticality in these actions right in Sagittarius uh, to set forth on a path but it's not necessarily about practicality here which is also what I share for me to get rid of the two practices I have that make me money to focus on writing a book that I don't know if it's gonna make me money is impractical but this is the spirit of Sagittarius so when we can really learn to devote ourselves towards that which sparks joy for us when we can really devote ourselves to a system of deeper learning to commit to perhaps a certain set of skills or beliefs that we love it will really help to channel the Sagittarian energy right there may be many paths that lead to one truth but devoting yourself to one system one religion one philosophy even though that we know that the big picture is many paths, it's important to have that one path to go down. And so I'm just looking at this path on the temperance card, right? And this is how to, to use this potent cosmic fire, super conscious fire energy of Sagittarius to be a true visionary in the world. And so this is true for all of us this time of year, but particularly to you if you have a lot of Sagittarian energy in your life. So you evolve as a Sagittarius when you commit to a path. You open this gateway to being a deliverer of life's truths, which is a prophet. The higher form of Sagittarius is a prophet or a teacher or the mentor, right? Sagittarius, soul-centered, is leading society and humans from one goal to another in this very uplifting, ever-expansive way in a way that highlights truth. And so it helps others expand into their own cosmic fire potential. 
which is part of what's building us up to the winter solstice, which is the actual shortest day of the year or the longest night, whatever way you want to think about it. And so it is a tipping point of our year. And this is where Sagittarius comes to an end. And then we move into Capricorn. And so in Capricorn season, on the Northern Hemisphere, this is when we gain two minutes of light every day, right? And so that's when the practicality gets to, to kick in. But right now, take these cards out, connect with them, and we're going to go deeper into it on our next episode for the Gemini Full Moon, which I'm excited to get into with you all with that polarity. We'll talk about Tina Turner. We'll talk about Stevie Nicks, Queen of Gemini. We'll look at both of their birth charts. And yeah. So that is our episode for today. Thank you always, Cosmic Cousins, for tuning into the show. It is such an honor to be here and to hold space for you in this way. Again, sign up for the newsletter, book a reading, astrologycousins.com. I would be honored to hold space for you either through a tarot reader, tarot reading or an astrology reading. And rate five stars, leave some comments and love. And I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you next time. Take sweet care, cousins. And remember deep breaths.